Before you begin your film project, it's a good idea to make a new folder to contain all of the items for the project. That way, if you need to move them, then they won't become unlinked uh, and the project will run smoothly. It's not always possible, but it's a good idea. First, I'll name the folder. And then inside that, I'll make some new folders, one called audio, one called footage, and into those I'll put my different assets. I'm just going to copy a few files over. Now that I have my assets ready, I'll make a new project using Adobe Premiere. From the start screen, we can choose new project and give it a name. We can also choose where to save it. I'm going to save it in the same folder as my assets and that way they will all be in the same place and easily organized. Then press OK. The first job is to bring in the assets and to do this we use file and import. Here I'll bring in my footage And I'll do the same thing again for the audio. Here in the project window we can see all of the assets that we brought in to make our film. To begin a sequence we can select one of the pieces of footage and by right clicking choose new sequence from clip. This is a useful way to start because it will give your sequence the same settings as your footage, so it will be the same size and resolution and frame rate. I'm just going to rearrange the windows a little so that we can see the timeline more clearly. Here in the timeline we can see our footage in the video layer and in the audio layer. This shows the waveform of audio that goes with this particular bit of video. When we have a clip in our sequence, we can trim it and change it in lots of different ways. Firstly, to trim, we can choose either end of the footage and when your cursor turns into the red arrow, you can click and drag to shorten that clip. You can do it the other way to extend the clip. Clearly, you can only extend it as far as the clip actually exists. To trim my footage, I can move this blue playhead along and scroll through it until I find a part that I like. Then I can use the red cursor to drag it to that point and you can see it snaps right to that position. So I've shortened my clip and as you can see it's left a gap now at the start, then the clip plays and then there's nothing. I can move this clip around by clicking it and dragging it along. If I want to review what I've got, I can press the space bar. It's the same as pressing the play button here. I can press space to stop it playing. If I extend my clip again, I'll show you another way to edit the clip length. By moving the playhead to the desired location, I can use this razor blade tool or press C and click the point in the clip where I'd like it to split. As you can see this has made it into two clips. I can move the playhead to my end point and click again. Then using the selection tool I can click on the parts I don't want and press backspace or delete to remove them. And again I can move that clip around. If I feel I've cut too much I can extend it again using the trim tool. To add more clips to my sequence, I can click them and drag them into the timeline from the project window. As you can see, this clip is of a different size and resolution to the previous one. So I've got a couple of options. Either I can change the resolution of the first clip to make it smaller, or I can make this one larger. In the effect controls panel on the top right, using the scale option, I can make that much larger.
until it fills my document window. As you can see, this reduces the quality quite a lot. I'm going to trim this clip in the same way as I did earlier, and I can move it into position next to the one that was already there. An easy way to do this as you're working, if there's a gap between two clips, you can right click and choose ripple delete. That will make sure that the clips follow on directly from one another with no gaps. If I want to rearrange my clips, I can click and drag them to a new point in the sequence. Before we go too far with our sequence, it's a good idea to regularly save what we're doing by going to File and Save. You can tell if it's recently been saved as there will be no asterisks at the end of the file name. If I make a change, you can see there is an asterisk showing that I've got unsaved changes. Now I have a few items in my sequence. I can get a closer look at them by using the zoom controls. By moving these two dots closer together, I can zoom in on my sequence and get a better idea of what's going on. You can see that the audio in the clips is variable. In some cases it sounds okay. In others, it's not really appropriate. You can hear the noise of traffic in the background. To remove the audio from these clips, there are several options. I can mute the entire track by pressing M and then place in my own music in the background. So I'll drag a clip of audio over into A2 here, the second audio track. I'm going to play it. The original audio is, not, is gone and you can instead hear this intense music. The music doesn't last very long, so I could duplicate it. But by holding down the Alt or Option key, I can click and drag on it, making sure it snaps to the end of my previous clip. If I want to keep some audio, but also remove some, I can choose to remove it from selected clips. I'm going to mute the music layer by pressing M, because I quite like the sound of the birds in the first clip, but I want to remove some of the sounds from the other clips. To do that, I'm going to right click on this particular clip and choose Unlink. This will separate the audio and the video, allowing me to treat them separately. So in this case, I can select the audio, press delete, and remove that entirely. I can do the same for these other clips, which also have unusable audio because of background noise, people talking, that sort of thing. <laughs> now if I take my playhead back to the start, unmute the music, I should be able to hear the birds as well as the music. Now as you can tell, the music drowns out the sounds quite a lot, so we might need to adjust the audio sometimes. To do that, we can expand one of the audio tracks so that we can better see the waveform. It also gives us access to this white line which controls the volume. So I can make this audio louder by dragging the white bar upwards. I can make it quieter by dragging it downwards. If I turn it up and see what it's like. You can hear it, but it's still very quiet compared to the music. So it might be a good idea without further editing the audio in something like Audition or even with some of the effects that Premiere has. I'm just going to turn down the music and see what that's like. So now we can clearly hear both sounds together. If you have other sounds you want to bring in, you can drag them onto the sequence in the same way. Because we might have a music track, I'm going to add any additional sounds into a third audio track. We can actually have lots and lots of different video and audio tracks to overlay footage and audio. To make another, we would simply drag the item down here to create a new audio layer. I'll undo that by pressing Command and Z. Now we should be able to hear several noises all at once. It might not be pleasant, but hopefully it gets the point across. Audio can be trimmed in exactly the same way as footage by dragging it at either end or using the razor tool to chop bits off, then 
select them and delete them. Having created my sequence, I can now use Premiere to make changes to it to hopefully improve it. One of the first things you might like to look at is how we transition from one clip to another. So at the moment, they just jump from one shot straight to another. This is absolutely fine on many occasions, but you might want to do something a little different sometime. The easiest way to access the different effects that Premiere has is to use the effects button at the top of the window like this. This will change the layout of the screen a little and show you all the effects that you can use on the right hand side. We can see here that we've got several folders which describe what's inside them and the first I'll look at is this video transitions folder. Transitions get you from one to the other in some way. So here across dissolve can be dropped onto the joining part of two clips and it produces this effect where one clip fades into another. To remove a transition we can click on it and press delete. As another example fading to black is called dip to black and that's done in exactly the same way but has this effect. There are lots of different transitions to explore, some more conventional than others. To change any of the transitions we click on the small brown icon and here in the effect controls on the left hand side we can control how long it takes to transition and whether it starts at the, the beginning, the end or in the middle of a cut. Changing the duration will make the icon in the timeline grow. It will also change the effect to take place over a longer time or a shorter time. We can also use transitions on audio if we wanted to fade between two pieces of audio we can use the audio transitions and one of the crossfade options. In the same way as before we drag it onto the joining part of the clip, select it and change its duration. We should be able to hear one fade into the other as it's the same sound it might not be too obvious but if you listen carefully you'll probably hear it. There's a slight dip in sound there. You can try these different transitions to see which works best for you. If you place a transition at the start of a clip, it will fade from nothing to either completely black, for example, for a video transition, or in the case of an audio transition, from silence. And again, we can control how long that takes to build up. Likewise, by putting a transition on the end of a clip, it will fade out. Amongst the many things that Premiere can do with your footage, one of the key elements is colour. By pressing the colour tab at the top, if you can't see these tabs for any reason, you can choose Window, Workspaces and choose it from there. When we are editing clips, we must make sure that the clip we wish to edit is highlighted in the timeline. It's also a good idea to put your playhead on that clip so you can see the result. For example, I could leave my playhead here, click on this second clip. It doesn't obviously change and here I'm actually making changes to this other clip, not this one here. So I might be happily working away, seeing no change, but then coming to another clip where it's changed dramatically. So do be careful that you highlight the clip that you want to work on before you start working on it. Experimenting with colour in Premiere is very straightforward. There are several options here from basic correction to much more complex things with curves. Beginning with the basic correction, we can change things such as exposure and make it lighter or darker. We can change the white balance to make it look cooler or warmer. Here are several other things that you can play with until you get the right sort of look for your footage. Saturation will add colour or make the colour more vibrant or it will take it away, turning it into a grayscale video. In the creative section, Premiere provides us with lots of looks. You can choose from a wide variety of looks and there are lots of others you can download as well. For example, 1965 film noir. Once you've applied a look to a clip you can still make some changes. Some of the other options we have for colour take a bit more practice because they represent colour through graphs. For example here in the curves changing the curve in this instance will affect the contrast and brightness 
of the footage. They're a bit tricky to understand, but definitely worth trying to get your head around. As I said, there are lots of other effects you can add to your sequence. Over here in the effects panel, we can have a look at some of the video effects. There are lots of different effects. The folder names give you some indication of what's inside them. For example, blur and sharpen contains lots of ways to blur or sharpen your footage. For example, Gaussian blur here can be dragged onto a clip. And then over in the effect controls panel, we can scroll down, find Gaussian blur and turn up the value here. All of the effects will have different settings that are worth playing around with to get the results you want. If you want to remove an effect, you can select it from the effect controls panel and press delete. If you want to turn off an effect, you can press the FX button to hide it while you have a look at some of the other options you might have. If you can't see the effect controls panel, you can either click these two arrows here to choose it from this list or window and choose effect controls. Once you're happy with the way your sequence looks and you've played it through and checked it's all all right, we can render it out. This means to take it from our Premiere project file, which has all of the editability, and turn it into uh, an MP4 or something that we can give to other people or upload to YouTube. To render a sequence, ideally, I would click in this area here. The reason for this is that you may have multiple sequences in Premiere Pro. For example, if you're working on a film with several scenes, each scene might be its own sequence so that you can work on them independently and bring them together at the end. Handily, Premiere allows you to have several sequences in one project, meaning you don't have lots of files to deal with and everything's in one place. So to render our footage, we go to File, we choose Export and then Media. This brings up the Export Settings panel where we can choose from a range of formats. I tend to use H.264. Here, there are lots of different presets, but again, in this case, I'm just gonna go with match source. Here on the left, we can see a preview of the sequence it's going to render, so it's always worth checking that this is actually what we think it is by having a quick run through. And then as we scroll down, we can make some other changes. For example, the output name. This is gonna be the name of the exported file and where it's going to be saved. I'm going to call it my film and save it in a place where I know where it is. Here we can see the resolution of this video is quite high. Uh, so I'm going to make a change to that. I'm going to untick this box and I'm going to make it 1920 by 1080 standard HD. At the bottom of this panel, we can see an estimated file size. This is very helpful because if you're running short on space on your computer and you don't have enough space to render the video, it will fail. So you must make sure you've got enough space to render the video out. Here I can choose export and that will go through the process of exporting my footage as a video file. Now that's complete, I can take a look at my exported video. Obviously the clips I've put together here are just for the purposes of this tutorial. So I hope you can use the processes you've learned here to make much more interesting and professional looking films.